I want to try to tell you about how I started my journey and, and coming to the Lord. So I grew up in New Orleans in a single parent home. My mom worked two jobs and she tried her best to bring us to church when she could. And most of the time, all I did was sleep in church. But the pastors, they preach fire and brimstone. So I had a knowledge of heaven and hell and burning in the flame for all eternity. But I had no knowledge of God. Fast forward, I went through a whole life of being a, a sinner. My mama called me one of the devil's best soldiers and that hurt and cut to the bone. But in my, I guess, late 20s, very early 30s, uh, when I was, you know, about to have, my wife was about to have my first child. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, my second child. I started feeling some some health effects, right? Like I had been like a, a very fit person in my early 20s and I was doing some manual labor. And at the beginning of the day, I was just tired and I just didn't know how I was gonna make it through the day. So I started looking into my health. And the first thing that I found was sugar needed to be cut out. I was consuming way too much sugar. And I started, you know, trying to limit my sugar to, I think it was like 15 grams a day, which, you know, one soft drink got like 50 something grams, like one can of Coke. And I remember sitting down and eating and I wouldn't want to eat my food because I was so angry that I couldn't have a soda. And that led me on to GMOs and, you know, uh, all the pesticides and herbicides and all these things they put into the plants and started researching all the different vitamin A, vitamin E, uh, you know, vitamin C and what foods contain what and what foods did what for you. And it was, it was a rabbit hole that I just dug down, right? And the main part of that is your body is a holy temple. You shall not defile it. And in this world that we live in today, there are nothing but contaminants that we continually put in our body. And this is a holy temple in which the Holy Ghost must dwell within. And so you want to have it nice and clean, right? The temple wasn't a place of uncleanness, right? You had to, even in the war camps of the house of Israel, man, the dudes couldn't come in unless they was clean. So it was a big thing about uncleanness, unclean practices as far as your, your uh, sanitary methods and unclean foods. And I say all this to say that my journey started with not defiling my body. Now, I've been up and down in my eating and cleanliness habits, but I always track back to the natural things of this earth. You know, like your fruits, vegetables, lean meat, and try to stay away from the processed things and the things with all the herbicides and chemicals put on that. You know, the GMOs that they got, they have made these things to where they are able to function with things like arsenic and cyanide and all kinds of stuff that's like not good for you. And our water, they got uh, chlorine, which kills stuff, right? It kills good and bad things. So, you know, for me, you, you, you do as you will, but you know, if it's, when I can smell the bleach, you know, about the, you know, drank something like, oh no, you know, I don't, I don't need, you know, sorry to offend something, but you know, recycled poop water, you know what I'm saying? Like, there ain't no way you could have this closed loop system and then it'd be good for you. It just don't make no sense. And I know that everybody don't have options to, to get to find the things in life, right? But, you know, I remember in the beginning when I'd have to go buy these cage-free organic eggs and one egg cost $10, another egg costs $6. I'm, I'm sorry, one egg costs $1, uh, $1.50 and one of them costs $6. Yeah, that's a big difference. And it's hard to justify. But I tell you what, 
my life was changed as I started to look into taking care of my body. My mind was open to other things. Not saying that that is the only factor in your life that you need to focus on because there's many people that eat good food, organic and got this clean water, but if they live in stressed out, you know, lives in turmoil, then this is no good, right? Because stress will kill you a whole lot quicker than a GMO. And that's just straight up. So you have to make sure you're taking care of your mind and your body so that you can hear the spirit as it speaks to you in whichever way it'll speak to you. I can't tell you how the Holy Spirit is going to guide you. You know, but I can tell you it guides me. There's a feeling in me when I'm making a decision that, you know, it, it, it tells me it's the right decision and it tells me it's the wrong decision. So, you know, your body is a holy temple. You shall not defile it. And I, in my walk with God, it was the thing that opened my eyes. You know, once I started looking into, I was, I, I worked on my diet, man. I just went into the scriptures hard, you know, and I was digging, I was digging, I was digging hard. And they had the Bible app and I'd write, uh, have that app playing all day, every day. I put it on Genesis and I let it ride. And I'd be on the way to school. I was a non-traditional student. You know, I was still in college in my thirties and I'd be on the way to school with it. You know, I'd be in the shower with it. And uh, I remember I was, me and my wife, you know, we had a child out of wedlock. And um, we wasn't married yet. But them scriptures convicted me that we was living in sin. And I was like, man, we can't even have sex no more. You know what I'm saying? Man, was just, we up in here fornicating. I can't be up in here in the word like this all day. And uh, I scrapped up a few coins and bought a ring and uh, asked her to marry me. And, you know, that happened. And I dug and I dug and I kept digging. And you know, I came to some questions that just didn't make sense to me as I was reading, because I didn't, I didn't really have a teacher, someone who to who, who I can come and ask questions and say, explain this to me, right? Because I knew what I was seeing out in the world, man. They like they doing, they walking contrary to the word of the Lord, you know. So it's hard to go ask a pastor why this is going on and can you explain to me this thing when they walk in contrary? Because whatever answer they give, it's not gonna be sufficient because I can't believe it, right? Because it don't seem like you believing in the word at all. You know, if the Lord say, look, you done made my father's house a den of thieves and I see this past stuff and that selling stuff in his church, it's hard for me to think he got understanding. If it say that you're supposed to do this forever and they stop doing it, it's hard for me to believe that these people got understanding because, you know, the Lord, he, he, he said he, he came to bring people back to the word. Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so, they should be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And so, you know, I do recommend anybody in your walk with God, you know, do not go in these churches if you have not read your Bible. Because I feel they're going to pollute you and poison you. It's just my honest opinion. Because they without understanding, right? There's no possible way that we can all read the same book and come up with 50 different interpretations. That's not God. The Lord is one. It's only, you know, the Lord say either you with me or against me. So I go around in circles just a little bit, but I I, I want to just bring it to you that, you know, until I was 30, I had never felt my body truly alive as I had removed all the contaminants that I was putting into my body. And I mean, it is 
gonna be hard to break a sugar addiction, a salt addiction, a caffeine addiction, a marijuana addiction, an alcohol addiction, all these prescription pill addictions that people have, right? And everybody got at least one of them things that they addicted to. You got pornography addictions. I mean, it's just so many different things that you have to remove from your life to truly get an understanding of how powerful you are, right? To really understand, to really feel alive, you know, to feel like you could run a couple miles and, you know, just, just be alive and wake up full of energy without needing coffee and go all day long like a eight-year-old child. I look at my children and I'm like, how do y'all have this energy to go all day? But I can roll with them a lot, you know? And I'm damn near 40 years old. So, your body is a holy temple. Do not defile it. And I tell you what, it is such a hard thing to resist all the temptations that you have around you. So, pray that the Lord God help you with this so that you can truly know what your body is capable of and your mind is capable of it. Because remember, if your body isn't operating properly, your mind won't be operating properly. And if your mind ain't operating properly, how could you truly interpret what God wants you to do in this world? 